right, let's take a look at just a quick review of some of the Excel functions that you're going to need to to really work with on a regular basis to make all of this adding and subtracting and multiplying, dividing just a whole lot easier for you. All I've done is opened up a new worksheet and what we're going to end up doing is a statement of cost of goods manufactured, which is something you're going to get to to learn to do this semester. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in my company name uh, statement whoops, whoops, of cost of goods manufactured. And then I'm going to come down and we're going to go for the month, month ended. Uh, June 30th, 2011. All right. Now, if you want to make this look nifty, then we're just going to take and highlight that row, and then up here in, X, in Excel 2007, you're going to see this nice merge and center button. Simply hit it. See, it's just going to take and merge and center any of the the cells that you select. You can go ahead and make this look very professional looking. Remember if we want to go back we wanted to take all of that we wanted to bold it just go up here and hit bold looks very nice we want to be fancy and have it italics we could do that and then we simply move down to our next cell to start entering our items for this for this statement. Uh, we're always going to start with direct materials and this is something that you'll learn to do this semester so I'm not so concerned that you understand the the words as you do the process. I'm going to start with inventory as of June 1 and I'm going to come over a couple of cells. I'm simply going to type in my value. And I'm going to keep doing this until I get all of my line items entered. But instead of you sitting here watching me do this through the magic of Excel and my screen capture program, I'm going to flip over to Sheet 1 and I've already got it in because I'm not really that concerned about you learning the the accounting behind this as I am just reviewing some Excel stuff. So I've got everything typed in and I'm going to go ahead and start entering in my values. Show you how to, to maneuver through this. Inventory as of June 1 was $15,000. We purchased $310,000 worth of materials. So now I need to know total cost avail of available materials. It requires me to add inventory plus purchases. The best, one of the best features in Excel is this auto sum key. I simply take it, hit the sum key, shows me it's going to sum those two figures. I hit enter and voila, it's added up. Now I have inven had in ending inventory at the end of the period of 25,000 which means my cost of materials used is going to be this 325 minus this. So I don't want to have to, I don't necessarily want to do that math in my head. So I'm just going to type in equals. I'm going to open a parentheses and I'm going to select the cell where I want it to begin subtracting from minus the next cell of 25,000. Close my parentheses, hit enter. It gives me 300,000. Instead of entering your numbers here, instead of entering the 325,000 minus 25,000, always go back and select the cells. Because you see up in the formula bar, if I go to that number, all of a sudden the formula is what appears here. And highlighted, it shows me that I subtracted this cell from this cell. Whoops. The advantage to that is that 
is twofold. One, if I make if I make a mistake, I can go back and that number isn't right. I can go back and see which two numbers I subtracted. The other thing is that let's say that inventory changed to twenty thousand dollars. Excel automatically recalculates my answer. So let's put that back to where it should be, 25,000. Now, this is a little, can be a little um, irritating in that I have no column, I have no commas, anything. I'm just looking at a million zeros. I can go back and select this entire column. I'm simply holding down my, my left mouse button and I'll go up and I'm going to say right click I'm going to format the cells and what I want them to be is I want them to be currency but I do not want any decimal places you're going to find in cost accounting we round everything up or everything down so we're going to be dealing with nice whole numbers I'm going to say OK and now I have numbers that look like, they actually look like money. I want to go back and I want to add some lines so that I can see what I'm adding and subtracting. So I'm simply going to highlight that cell, go up here to the borders. I like a nice thick bottom border so I can see what I've got. As you can see, let's put a nice border there for me. I've made another mathematical operation there. So I'm going to add another bottom border to that cell. And we're actually starting to look like we're doing accounting. Now I'm going to take less direct materials and I'm going to say that was 10,000. Now see I'm just typing the 10,000 in. When I hit enter it'll automatically be converted into that currency format because we formatted all of the cells. I'm going to do something with those two numbers so I'm going to add another border, just going up there to the border, and I'm going to say that my cost of direct materials used in production is this 300,000 minus the 10,000. So again, I'm going to let Excel do it for me. I just simply typed in equals, open a parentheses, I'm going to subtract, I'm going to take the 300,000, I'm going to subtract from it the 10,000, I'm going to close my parentheses, hit enter, $290,000. Now, somewhere in this problem they gave me direct labor at $240,000. Now, you'll notice that these, this number isn't in currency format. It's because we didn't format this column. So I'm going to format this column. Again, I'm going to go back, just highlight it, right click, say format cells, I want currency, I want no decimal places, and I'm going to say OK. Now, all right, coming back over here to factory overhead, had indirect materials, so 10,000, 47,000, 35,000, 15,000, and 23,000. I need a total factory overhead number, so again I'm going to do an operation, so according to, to just our standard accounting format, I'm going to put a dark border there, and I want my total factory overhead number over here. So I want the sum of all of these numbers to appear in this cell. In order to do that, I'm going to highlight the cell where I want the total to appear. I'm coming back up here. I'm going to hit my sum button and I'm going to select the cells that I want to be and that I want to be totaled to appear there. As soon as I'm sure I have them all, I'm going to hit enter and there's $130,000. So now I have total manufacturing costs during the period. And that's what I've been collecting over here. So we have thick bottom border and I want total manufacturing costs to appear in this cell. So I'm going to highlight the cell, 
I'm going to go back up to my sum. See, it's only picked this one, so I want to say I want all of this. As long as there's nothing in the cell, it doesn't matter if you select it because Excel will notice or automatically knows it's an empty cell. And I'm going to hit Enter. And now I have $660,000 in total manufacturing costs, which is this plus this plus this. If I wanted to go back, if for some reason that number wasn't right, I can go back and look and I'll see up in my formula bar that it said it summed everything here. All right. So now I have to add work in process inventory of 85000 So because it says I need to add it, I'm going to do a thick border. And now what I want to do is, again, I'm going to use that auto sum. I'm going to go up to sum, and I want it. See, it's asking me again, what do you want me to add? I want you to add these two numbers, and I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm up to $740,000. Now I need to subtract work and process inventory. And because I need to subtract it, I'm going to go ahead and put my border. To get my cost of goods manufactured, I've got to subtract two cells now. So I'm just going to say, again, equal. Open my parentheses. And I'm going to say I want to subtract 745000 minus my 125000 close my parentheses, hit enter, and my cost of good manufactured during the month was $620,000. The advantage to this is that you're just not spending all of your time adding and subtracting. You're going to go ahead and let Excel do it for you. Um, if I wanted to go back up, and again, I could highlight those, I can make them bold, I can make them italic, I can make them look fancy. Um, I might want to bold this, and I might want to bold this, go through and bold those two, simply clicking onto the cell and using the bold. So that will give you kind of a brief overview of doing some add and subtracting, a little bit of formatting, and hopefully this will help you as you move through this semester.